Hello, and welcome to Get Your Digital On, where life is tech and tech is life, and the word blog still sounds a little green and slimy to me. Just me. <laughs> Mashable recently released a tip on how to use Twitter hashtags to boost your job search. I have my own list on how to boost your job demise. There's this one, and this, and don't forget this one. There's an ongoing debate as to whether social media experts like yours truly and James Andrews, he's on a horse, get any sleep due to constant social media activity around the clock and around the globe. We thought you'd never ask. Microsoft announced spending $1 billion on pushing Connect and Windows phone platforms. So now Steve Ballmer feels like Super Ballmer. <laughs> tech One, Tech Two, my showstopper today on two things I like most, hip hop and technology merging thanks to Jay-Z. I'll get your mind right with the experts of Blog World Expo 2010, my company spotlight on Les Adelingi of Fusebox Inc. in Atlanta, Georgia, my Mission Impossible on editing MP3s online, these tech diamonds, and my last call for alcohol. Let's get it cracking. Get your digital on. Starts right now. Welcome to Get Your Digital One. All this technology is Where life is tech and tech is life. And I know the biggest issue in tech in the last decade. We here at Get Your Digital One would like to know. My showstopper today merges two of my favorite things. Music and technology. Microsoft and Jay-Z teamed up to promote his upcoming book, Decoded, with a project called Decode Jay-Z with Bing. It boasts over 300 pages of Jay-Z's life and lyrics placed in the streets where it all went down. It's part game, part search engine, and for once, Microsoft gets it right. Teaming up with Jay-Z, not only a great way to showcase Bing, but it also gives Microsoft something it never had, street cred. More at bing.com forward slash Jay-Z. Leo Laporte, Chris Perillo, Laura Fitton, and Chris Brogan. They all weigh in at Blog World Expo 2010. Pay attention, take a look. The opportunity for you guys, for all of us, to make content cheaply and to, to distribute over the internet uh, almost free means that you, you all can do shows. It's about those real world connections. Because it's not just about being online and connecting online and meeting people online. It's about meeting those people online in real life when they're online at the same time. Is that Twitter completely turned my life inside out and changed it in ways that have given me the opportunity to do little tiny things to try and make the world better. And seeing that pattern, I got really obsessed with this idea that once everybody gets it, whether it is some version of Facebook, some version of Twitter, something we haven't seen yet, when everybody on a mass level, four billion handsets mobily worldwide, that type of mass adoption really gets what's possible here, some really frigging amazing things are gonna happen. Take your ideas and make them small, compact, and readable, and that people can take them with them, and then they can do more things. When I talk about this, campfires of today are DNA deep. Campfires aren't where all the people are, because all the people aren't all in one place anymore. We're spread to the wind now, right? Our tribes are everywhere. This is street religion. You've got to get back on the street. You've got to get back out to where they are. And that's with your content, too. Your awesome site isn't awesome. Getting the story into the hands of the people who need that story is awesome. More about Blog World Expo at blogworldexpo.com. For my company spotlight today, I get a chance to talk to Mr. Les Adelingi, who is the CEO and founder of Fusebox Inc., and also the CEO of Studio Plex Studios, where we shoot this show. Let's take a look. Get your digital on company spotlight. I'm super excited today to have the CEO of Fusebox Inc. and Studio Plex Studios sitting here with me, Les Adelingi. Thanks, Les, for coming through. My pleasure. All right, so I'm, I want to jump right into this because I have some things I want to ask. So you've said over numerous times, I've heard you say it, that the traditional model of the music business distribution is broken. Can you just explain a little bit about that? Sure. Um, in 1980, music was the most profitable entertainment industry. It was more profitable than sports, more profitable than movies, 
and more profitable in books and radio. So now you've got an industry that's been in decline for almost 30 years. And what's been happening in those 30 years is that they've forgotten how to get their product to their customer. So their distribution model is broken. So go to 1980. You've got cassette tapes. You've got different forms of ways people can listen to music. And the industry was always lagging behind and providing ways to get access to their product. Now, fast forward to Napster, year 2000. Kids are online. That's the biggest audience for music. And what does the music industry do? It says, kill Napster. Kill the way that we're going to actually distribute our product to our customer in the way that our customer wants to consume it, which is to download it and put it on an MP3 player. Yep. You're right. Well, some of it kept going from there, though. And, Daddy-O, I think that you, having experience in the music industry, can understand this, that there all of a sudden was another company that stepped into the mix, specifically Apple. So there have been these MP3 players going back to the late 90s and then through the early part of this last decade, yet it took Stephen Jobs, who's not in the music industry and not a person who any, knew anything about music, but only about computers and about the way consumers like to use computers, and figured out that if he built a device with the right kind of software and then provided music behind that, people would start consuming software through that device now we all know it as the iPod and all the iPod products, mm -hmm. and people would start using music in a different way. And that's the second part of the problem of the broken distribution. That second part is that music is not just a standalone experience. If you go back to 1980, people would put a record on in their house and they'd listen to an album. Right. Nobody does that anymore. Right. Kids particularly who are, are the audience for a lot of popular music, but even adults, want their music embedded in a movie, they want it in their car so it's portable, they want it part of a ringtone inside of a phone, and they also want it as part of a game. If you now take the same statistic that I was quoting about 1980, what's the most popular form of entertainment? Well, if you look at books, movies, TV, radio, newspapers, and music combined, they're exceeded by video games. And what's the, most under, what's the underlying theme of every video game? music. It's the narrative that drives people through the game and that's where music becomes popular and discovered these days. So music is broken in distribution in two ways from the major industry. One, an industry who's trying to protect itself against the way the consumer really wants to consume its content or its product, which is to download it from the internet and download it maybe in two different ways, free and paid for, depending on the experience. And then you have an industry that doesn't understand that music actually belongs to other experiences like a video game or in the car or as a theme music that you listen to all the time because you've got your earphones in and you're living your life with a melody in the background. Right. So it's it, this, this disconnect from the consumer that's caused the problem in distribution. Speaking of software, Fusebox Inc. is developing a product called Fuse Dash. Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. Fuse Dash is a platform for media distribution. So if you think about all the different places the consumer is today, a person or company or artist or management group that wants to produce music, or for that matter, any other entertainment, must show up wherever their customer is. Fuse Dash is a platform for distributing music, video, video games, and any other types of multimedia to the four corners of the internet. So Fuse Dash is simply a piece of software that can be accessed through a website and whoever accesses it can upload their content and it'll distribute that content to any place on the internet like Facebook, Twitter, even for that matter professional uh, portals like LinkedIn. And without having to distribute CDs, DVDs, uh, booklets, anything else, a company or individual or management group who produces content can get their content out directly to the consumer. Awesome, awesome. And finally, I ask everyone this, if there was one piece of technology that you could not live without, what would that be? That's very easy. Indoor plumbing. I could not <laughs> live without indoor plumbing. Les, we'd like to thank you for coming through. Absolutely. Thank Stop you, by Daddy-O. I will. All right. Absolutely. Les Ottolenghi, get your digital on. I'd like to thank Les for stopping by the show. More on him and Fusebox Inc. at FuseboxInc.com.
Hey, Professor Daddy, this is John. My question of the day is, is there any place online where I can edit my MP3s? Let me know. Thanks. John, I know just the thing. MP3 Cut is an online service that allows you to upload MP3s, edit, and save your edit. Super helpful product. More at mp3cut.com. So whether you're jocking Jay-Z, taking tips from Chris Perillo, or editing MP3s, it will be best if you get your digital on. Last call. Yeah.